Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math portion of the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it in order to prepare for the exam. The problem that I'm about to solve is the one that you're going to find on page number 149. Page 149 and today is our day number 35, lesson number 35. Let's take a look at it. Turn to the page 145. Take a, very, take a look at the very first problem that you see on the top of the page. It looks something like this. They're given a picture. We are given a picture here. A rectangle. Something to this effect. And we are simply being asked to find the area of this part right here. Let's see what it is that we know. Let's see what it is that we are given to us. By the way, if you are curious as to how difficult this problem is supposed to be, how difficult is this problem supposed to be in the real exam, this question when it was given in the real exam, for those of you who are interested, the exact same problem you will find on page number 136 of 10th edition. Page 136 of the 10th edition book, right here that I'm holding in my hand, this is the old version of the SAT. The reason the same exact problem appeared in that pro in, the, in this in the old, older version is because there are some questions that are repeated that, that they have used uh, from the old old like, book that I'm holding in my hand and the new book that I just showed you, which is the revised GRE. So when this problem appeared in the original exam, in, in case you're curious how many people got it right, 77 percent of people. 77% of people had no problem with it at all. Uh, three quarters of the people got the problem very, very easily, uh, got it correctly, that is. We are told that R to V, we are talking too much right now, T to U is 30. T to U is 30. Well, what is the, so we have here R, S, T, U. We are told that, uh, well, I'm just going to do it by my, board, my notes here. You just follow my work here. R, R S T. Oh, lost it. R S, R S T U and V. We are told that R to V is two. We are told that T to U is three. We are told that U to V is four. U to V is four. So U to V is four. T to U is 3 and we are told that R to V is 2. So we know one side of the rectangle here, we know the, uh, we know the, we know the length of this side, we have to find this side right here. Right here, this side is what we need to find here. How do we find out the length of this side? Because if we know the length of T to V, then the area of the rectangle that they are talking about, the area of the rectangle, which is R S T V, R S T V is simply R to V, which is this side, times S V to T, V to T. How do we find the third side there? By simply using the Pythagorean theorem. By simply using Pythagorean theorem, which tells us that R V to T is going to be, let's call it X, let's which is a hypotenuse here, because this is a right angle triangle. So it's 3 squared plus 4 squared equals x squared. 3 squared is 9. 16 is x squared, which is 25, and therefore x is 5. So this guy turns out to be 5. And therefore the area of this thing is just 2 times 5. Now for those of you who, who, who know it, this thing, we didn't have to do all of this work here. If you were simply able to recognize right away, 
that is a 345 triangle, 345. A 345 triangle, let's make a note here. A 345 right angle triangle. It is called 345 right angle triangle. 345 right angle triangle is a special kind of triangle. It's special because it's the only triangle that the nature created where the three sides happen to be three consecutive integers. Three, four, five. It's the only triangle where the square of this side plus the square of that side will equal the square of the third side, which is 25. 25 equals 9 plus 16. And if you, if you knew that part, then we, 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 wouldn't have to, we wouldn't have had to do all of this work. We would have known right away that this missing side is 5 and it would have saved us a few seconds. But anyway, that was it. Let's do the next problem. Let's do the next problem, which is problem number 13. We are told that the mean is 8. We are told that the standard deviation the standard deviation is 2.5 and the question simply is we are asked to find a number that is exactly two standard deviation above the mean two standard deviation above the mean we're talking about here a normal distribution. Tell you what, tomorrow on day number 36, on day number 36 tomorrow, if you want to, if you're watching this video, obviously, watch the next video, which is going to say day 36 on it, and I'm going to do the entire video where I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the notion of normal distribution. Normal distribution is something that did not appear in the old exams, the old GRE, but these days in the new GRE they're putting more emphasis on the statistics, and uh, you need to know a little bit about what is known as normal distribution. It looks like this. It is also sometimes referred to as the bell curve. Normal distribution. Also known as the bell curve. So here is your mean. This is your mean. And standard deviation tells us standard deviation tells us how widespread the thing is. So here we are told that standard deviation is 2.5. So from here to here, this is your first standard deviation. If this is the mean, how much is the mean? Mean is 8. So from here, to if this is mean, which is 8, and if the standard deviation is 2.5, then a number that's going to fall exactly one standard deviation away from 8 is going to be 10.5. And a number that falls, or, or rather an observation that falls exactly one standard deviation below the mean, one standard deviation below the mean is going to be 2.5 mi 8 minus 2.5, which is going to be 5.5. We're looking for a number, we're looking for a number, an observation that falls, that is exactly two standard deviation above the mean. Above tells us we're looking at the right. So second standard deviation is going to be somewhere here. So we can have to add another 2.5. This was 2.5 from here to here. So 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5. So a number, a number that is exactly two standard deviation above the mean is equal to your mean, which is your mean, plus two times the standard deviation. Two times the standard deviation. Two times. 2.5, which is 5, 5 plus 8 is 13. That's, that's your answer. Let's do the next one, number 14. We are done with this one. If they had asked us a number that is 2 standard deviation below, 2 standard deviation below the mean, then we would, we would have been looking at something that falls here, which is going to be 8, which is your mean here, 8, 1.5, 1 or rather 2.5 and 2.5 is 5 below 8, which is 3. Which makes sense because if, if this is 3, then if the standard deviation is 2.5, then if you add 2.5 to 3, you get 5.5. If you add 2.5 to 5.5, you get the mean, which is 8, and so on and so forth. 
As I said, tomorrow we, I'm going to discuss a little bit more detail as to uh, how much area is covered under the curve and so forth and what exactly uh, standard deviation actually means, uh, intuitively speaking, that is, conceptually speaking, that is. We'll do it tomorrow. Let's do the next problem. In the next problem on the same page, we are given a graph there with a whole bunch of different doctors and we are told that the total number of doctors is 200,000. So we have a total of 200,000 doctors. And we are asked to find sectors with more than 40,000 doctors. Well, 40,000, let's find out what that represents as a percentage of 200,000. 40,000 as a percent of, uh, as a percentage of 200,000, the ratio turns out to be, let's see what it is. For, first of all, we can cross out the three zeros, the thousand, and this zero goes out. Four divided by 20 is one over five. 4 divided by 20 is 1 over 5, which is same as which is same as 20%. So basically we're looking for sectors with more than 20%. The sectors that employ is more than 20% of the doctors. So you look at your pie chart that they give you and you start looking for the sectors that have more than 20%, which is quite straightforward. So we have your period PD. Pediatrics, I believe it's how it's pronounced, pediatrics, which is your A. What other sector says? Internal medicine, which is your B. And then finally, oh, I shouldn't say finally because we don't know that yet. Surgery, which is the C. And you can see that all the others are less than 20%. So the correct answer choice is correct answer choice is not choice. The correct answer choice is R, R, A, B, and C. That is one difference. There are several differences between the old GRE and the new GRE. The one important difference is the introduction of this these type of questions where there are more than one answer choices. And if they give you seven answer choices, if they, if they tell you, if they ask you a question, uh, uh, what is the possible age of Michael based on blah 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 blah? What are the possible age of Michael? Then based on the context, based on the scenario that is presented to you, you have to check mark all the possible ages. So if there are seven answer choices and five of them work, then you have to you must uh, take uh, put a check mark, uh, put a tick, uh, put a marker next to all five choices. If you mark only four, you will not get partial credit. You will get no credit. So here there are three answer choices, and you must pick all three of them: A, B, and C. I will see you tomorrow, as I said, on day number 36, where we'll do, where, where, where I will spend a few minutes talking about the notion of normal distribution. Alright, see you tomorrow. Bye bye.